New. New. Okay, first up we have coming soon. Yep, we have a new book, Exploring Arduino, from Jeremy Bloom, uh, a maker community friend uh, and mentor to many, uh, will, is writing another book, and uh, it's coming out soon. Sign up to get notified right. when it's released, and we stock everything you need to follow along the book projects in the store. So we tend to stock convenient. books where we have all the stuff that goes with it, so people can just get the book and all the things. Okay. Next okay. up. We have another USB-C FTDI cable. USB-C is kind of taken over, and so we're slowly adding USB-C versions of a lot of stuff. Um, this cable is fully reversible, USB-C, and it's a five volt FTDI cable with genuine FTDI chip inside of it. On the end, you get power, ground, RX, TX, RTS, and CTS. So it's good for like, you know, we're programming a ESP32 or ESP266 Huzzah or, um, uh, per trinket or one of the older like Arduino boards that has a programming port on it. Um, the previous version we had was three volt power and logic. This one is five volt power and logic. So better for higher power, or higher voltage items. Yep. We have a uh, panel mount um, T, I guess it's tip sleeve uh, mono 3.5 millimeter jack. We've had one that was plastic body. This one is fully metal with paper phenolic um, spacers by request. Uh, Bill Bingo, he asked for us to carry this. And so I was like, sure, this looks pretty handy. Um, it's open case, but uh, you know, it's also pretty easy to solder too because the tabs stick right out and uh, you can't overheat it, melt it because it's fully metal. Um, and uh, yeah, I can just show it on the overhead because the demo photo didn't, isn't there. So you've got a, uh, um, this is the GC jack, and then you've got a hex nut and a um, little uh, lock washer, so you can easily connect it to a panel mount um, of, of any sort. And then uh, when you insert any 3.5 millimeter uh, plug, you can even see that this contact connects to the tip, and then um, this other contact connects to the sleeve, and then this middle contact is disconnected. So this is good if you want to have like a, uh, see by default, it's shorted to um, the tip, but when you insert, it pushes it out of the way. So there you go, no longer connected. So uh, it's got tip sleeve and tip disconnect. Okay. Next up. We've got NeoPixel buttons. Uh, people like these, we've sold them in packs of five, and if people are like, hey, I want 50, and I'm like, okay. So you're not gonna shoot a 50, you can break these off. Um, these are great for, if you're comfortable with soldering, you can, um, solder wires to each of the little buttons and then you break them off from the sheet uh, and each one has data in data out these are used for like you know when we have the fully um, uh, enclosed dots but sometimes you want something even slimmer so if you pair these with uh, silicone wires you can make for a very uh, small and slick um, mini LED NeoPixel connection of course use it with anything that can drive NeoPixels and then you just break these off as necessary Andy. We've got two cases um, for the Raspberry Pi. They're very similar. So I'll kind of show both at the same time. This is the bottom and that's the top. This version of the case does not have fans in it and the case itself acts as a heat sink. Um, so it has a little nub that comes down and, and sits right on top of the CPU chip and it's made for the Pi 4 because the Pi 4 does run a bit hotter than the rest. Um, but it's really easy to assemble, it comes with all the screws and some standoffs, and um, it's chunky. If you're going to connect a hat to it, you'll want to get one of our standoff um, risers. We have these 2x20 risers, so you can connect hats to it, but you can. Uh, you have slots for display and camera, so um, you'll have to open the display, remove it to connect the camera, but then you close it, it's nice and solid. Uh, you've got all the contacts on the side. And then, yeah, any hats you want can sit on top or you can just connect to the GPIO pretty easily. But this is the um, solid and very quiet version of the case, which does not have any fans, doesn't require any extra power. But let's say you're like, I want more heating, you want active, sorry, you want less heating, you want active cooling. This version has um, dual fans. So it doesn't, the case doesn't uh, sit on top of the chip, obviously, because it has this slot instead where um, you know the fans stick out, or sorry, stick in, and then um, they're powered by the Raspberry Pi. So this does, uh, it 
it has a slight sound. It's very quiet, but maybe you need something ultra quiet. It's not ultra quiet. It's not as quiet as you know, this. Yeah, I can't it. really hear it. I'm pretty close. I know. It's, but, yeah. you know, it, it uses more power, and it does have a slight sound to it, even though it's incredibly quiet. Um, so there's two options. They cost the same because even though this one has the fans, this one has a lot more metal. But um, they both will work quite well. Uh, and cooling um, your Pi 4. Uh, this one, of course, will do a better job. So if you're doing a lot of you know, machine learning or computation or emulation that's very high power, then this fan, of course, will be better. And it does use more power because you'll be plugging into uh, the five volt power on um, the GPIO pins there. But two options for Raspberry Pi 4 cases. Okay, and this is the star of the show besides you, Lady Ada, and our community and all of our Adafruit team members. Yes, this is a mini Pi TFT. So this is a very adorable little screen. We got this screen and we made a breakout. Look and then, at the quality of this. Yeah, it's not Photoshop. It is beautiful. It's for real. Um, so I have the live version as well. But you can see there's two ways to use it. Either you can tiny use it, device. it's tiny. You can either use it with Python directly, which does not require kernel drivers. This is what I'm doing here. And I'm just using uh, Pillow, which is a library. That looks unreal. It does look unreal, but it's, it's true. You can actually play little videos on it, but it's, it's quite small. Yeah. So this is a 240 by 135, which is um, good enough to have um, good resolution, great color. Of course, it's a full color display. Uh, in this case, I'm not using all the colors, but you can still see its color uh, compared to an OLED. Um, there's two buttons on the side that you can use to change UI or do signaling, whatever, because it just turned out that I had to make it this wide to get all the pins and then we had enough space exactly for two buttons. Um, it works on any Raspberry Pi you like. Uh, you can either install the kernel module if you want, which is, you know, it, it does update your kernel to the latest. That's the trade-off. Or you can, if you just need basic, you know, basic drawing onto it with Python, um, use the pillow library. And uh, that's definitely the easiest way. And it'll work on any single board computer that has SPI and uh, Python support. So that's handy. Um, and then a bonus on the bottom, it even has a little um, four pin quick connector. Of course, I didn't bring any quick sensors, but uh, if you have a STEM IQT or quick sensor, uh, you can see there there's um, a spot to plug that in. So it's really easy if you want to connect uh, a sensor or an output or you know, LEDs or whatever, and you want to use that I2C port because you've kind of used up these pins. Maybe you don't want to use a stacking header. Um, this makes it really easy to connect external I2C devices, which is quite popular with people, especially since we have Blinka in all of our yeah. libraries for Since it displays on. video, could you have a camera go to it? Yes, we did a, yeah. a demo we did. where we um, have the Raspberry Pi camera and the machine learning yeah. output go to this little display. It That's using the, um, I think that was with the kernel module, but yeah. you could use it uh, Again, if you know if you can get anything into Python, you can display it on the screen. All right, and that's new product. Okay. All right, we're gonna do a new recap. Recap. New recap. New recap. Uh, we've got coming soon from Jeremy Bloom, exploring Arduino, a updated book with lots more projects that you can build with an Arduino Uno. We have a new FTDI USB-C cable, great for any USB-C devices. This one is five volt power and five volt logic. We also have the three volt power, three volt logic version. Um, by special request, this is a panel mount, uh, tip sleeve mono, 3.5 millimeter jack, great for audio or assistive tech work. Uh, these popular NeoPixel mini buttons, as I like to call them, um, are great if you want to make very slim uh, NeoPixel projects uh, with little LED lights. Um, you know, solder to the back and then I'm coming to pack of 50. We have two Raspberry Pi 4 cases. One of them is a totally passive cooled case uh, that's fully um, milled aluminum. Uh, it does not have fans. Uh, it's a little bit heavier um, and it doesn't cool as well as the active cooling one which has two fans, but then of course draws more power and does have a slight noise to it um, compared to the completely passive one. So we have two options depending on whether you want uh, more cooling, more power, or adequate cooling, but no extra power usage. Both for the Raspberry Pi 4, of course, will fit any one of the options, the one, two, or four gigabyte. And the star of the show is the Mini Pi TFT 1.14 inch, 240 by 135 IPS display, this beautiful display, uh, can be programmed in Python or it can have a terminal on it that comes straight from Linux. Uh, it also has a Stemma 
QT slash quick connector on the bottom for easy attachment of sensors and two buttons on the top uh, to select different modes or user interface. And that's new products.